was that we got out of church on the Sunday and, and went out to, our, uh, to get into the uh, in our cars and I got out and, and the family was in the car and we drove around the corner and started up the past their funeral home and I was looking up the road as we tra as we went up that way and and so uh, and I know this and not another thing things don't just happen as it is this morning where you're at now with your program. And those don't just happen. It takes uh, that we know that the Lord's in those things, but we got to put them to use. When I got up along there, right there in front of the, of the Axum house, and I, I didn't say just something, though I know it didn't just happen. My head turned and I looked at that house, and the left-hand window, right at the very bottom of it, to the right of the bottom of it, it was a flame on the curtain, and it was just up just a little ways from it. Floor, the, the bottom of there was a couple inches, just a little bit from that bottom there was a flame. And in that little flame there, this momentary that I would have took my eyes away, but just I glanced at it and saw it, pulled up and parked, and I, and I got out of the car real quick, went around the building, and, and I looked in the front, and what it had done is a piece of the wallpaper had come down from the ceiling, and it, and it swung down and caught that curtain of fire. And that's why it was burning. But then we went around the back, and there was a pump there, and there was just a little bucket. And but so I went inside and opened the door. And as you opened the door, going up that stairwell, it was just a real narrow. You could hardly climb up it to get up it. And then I knew it was coming from up near the top of that. But to get a water and to get in that little narrow stairwell with a suit on, trying to throw that water up, but you know. To, you try to throw it up and now there's about five feet and there was about three or four feet more up there to try to get water up there and I couldn't. And so we stood there and then the, several people came in and was getting up the, the, the things out of it. I stood there and thought just as soon as that was over I thought well what was doing it I thought well if we just had a garden hose or if we had a pickup with a little tank on it or something we could have saved that house. But you can't save them all, and I know it's a worse nightmare when you get there and don't have the equipment or don't have what you need to get it done. So, so from that very time right there that it happened, I thought well, we got to do something. And so we had it, our improvement organization to tell you that we had that was formed, and I called them, and so that next, that next week or that after that, that that was on Sunday that week that I, I went to, Call America together to have a meeting about getting a, something that we could find far away. And so, uh, some said that they felt like that getting a fire truck there was going to be something would be on our means. So, like, and so what uh, I said after we discussed some of the things, and I said it isn't a question of whether we can or whether we can't, it's a question if we want. If we want it, we can get it. There's, and so then uh, I had a friend, uh, uh, Sandy, uh, <coughs> that uh, from down to, uh, he was down to Owensburg. And uh, so uh, Sandy Corbett. And Sandy uh, was a big help to me. And he was there. He was the fire chief there at Crane. And I had to be there at Crane and in the same building. So we talked about it a lot to get them things. So I got on the list to see uh, that if we were somewhere, maybe there would be a chance that we could get a fire truck or get some fire equipment or <coughs> something. Well, this one day it was, uh, I got a call. It was in the evening. And I got a call and said, well, we got you a truck. And I thought, you know, you just, you're on five and nine, and then you think, well, you got a truck. Well, it had to be more to it than just that. That he told me, he said, well, it's over in Granite City, Missouri. Well, I didn't even know where Granite City was, but I knew that north of Kansas City, and I found out it was there. And he said, and the next thing was, it had to be off there by the next day, and the weather was going to get bad. And uh, so I had to have it off there. And then there was even more to that, that I didn't have any papers, had to be a municipality that the papers in order to get it. So I thought of the trustee and Mike Stipp. I called Mike and I said, Mike, I've got a big problem. Got to go to Camp Atterbury to get a papers to get a fire truck with. And so 
loaded in a car and went to Camp Atterbury, and, and so we got the papers for the for the trout that, that to get it released to us. Well, then it just all started from there. From then to make arrangements, I didn't even own the car. The son-in-law and, and my daughter, they said, well, they would take this, this over there. So we started out that evening trying to, and our son was five years old, and we're headed for Grand City and not knowing what it's going to bring. And I did have the papers and all that good stuff, and trying to load things that you could in a car, to what little that you could, to go get a fire truck. Well, we got over there, and, and so uh, had the papers, and now we could get it. Went out there to look at, but this time the snowstorm had set in. And it was getting bad, the wind was blowing. Looked out there and there set out on a big lot, a great big, huge a storage lot out there. And there sit out there just covered with snow, and the snow was blowing, it was getting colder. And then it got out there, and we didn't have gas, they had to put gas in it. We had to go get a gas can, go off the station, get a five gallon of gas, and come back again and put it in the truck and hope it would start it. Well, it didn't. And so then we went to, down to Public Works and talked to people down there. And so they had a mechanic that came up and hooked on to it and started to add air up the tires and start pulling around around that lot to start it. And it would not start. Got checked around over and it was all cosmoleaned over. And the tailpipe was stopped up because it was shipped to be shipped overseas. We pulled that out of it and we finally got it started. But it's still going to get dark, and we were still on the sand. So we got it off of there. We got it off of the lot. And after we got it off of the lot, but well, then we had to take it and put gas in it. We, we got that fired up. Well, but then the storm was getting worse, and you couldn't hardly see. And so then we started to head toward Bedford with it. And we got over there a little ways, and the snow got so big and heavy, and you couldn't see the highway. And, so he was driving his car, and I was driving that truck behind him, and we switched to it. didn't have no heat in it. And the time we got across, uh, start across, uh, do all that area there, and you couldn't see in front of you, you couldn't see nowhere, the snow was blowing, you couldn't see and just watching the taillights of the car, and, and you were just guessing, we were just guessing where they're hoping that we were, the equidistant. And so we did, we got on over this way uh, with it, and then finally, the lights were getting dim on it, and so we found a little town over there, and way over there we got in, and so it had a station that was open. We pulled in there, and it was, it, at that time, it was dark, and uh, so he looked it all over, and he said the generator burned up on it. Had no generator, had no power, and no way to run it, and so that he Took, we took the generator out, he took the, rather the battery out, charged the battery up for us that night. We got a motor, we got a, a little, had some little cabins we got, and it was cold. So, and then we had a little dog that we thought thought of, we boarded her at the vet to keep us over the weekend. Incidentally, we got back, she took a hard pad and she died from that. So, uh, you know, you just prepare for things you think, but always those things ahead of you. But anyway, that um, there again, we got over this way then with it, with the battery in it. The next morning, though, the sun was shining. The sun was shining, and we started back toward Bedford. We made it back with the fire truck, and the rest of that was pretty well history, but we still didn't have a place to put it. Like we are, like you are right now, we didn't have nowhere to store it. And we had a lot of work to be done on it. I started around again trying to find a place around here we could put it in. Couldn't find it in. I thought, well, we may have to push to start it. And there you pass it all the time. The first fire station is right there at the corner by the school on Fred Doolin's uh, lot. We got finally talked him in the ocean to get the piece there big enough just to dig back in the bank and put the fire station in there. So that's your first fire station. On the corner, you pass that all the time and didn't realize it. But they put it there so that we could push it off the hill and it had two ways to go if we tried to get it started. We still didn't have any equipment for it. We had to 
get equipment, and there's where Sandy come in again from big time, and I was trying to get nozzles, get parts that we could, and, and then we didn't have any hose for it. Uh, we didn't have anything for it. It was just a bare necessity of the truck. And so then, finally, I was able to get some surplus uh, 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 pie, uh, hose, and then come find out, send it to him, said, now let's, uh, and found out too that there's a different size uh, that, uh, they, and it took an adapter to fasten the two together. He was able to buy some hose, a commercial hose, but that was a Navy, Navy hose with the Navy fittings on it. You may run across that. It's a little adapter about so big, brass, it was made to couple the two together. So I was able to get some hose, and then we bought some hose, and so, uh, and then we was able to get some nozzles and get some fittings and uh, some of the things that we was critical to us that we actually needed. So uh, we were able to to get some different nozzles, get some nozzles, and this as we went. Uh, so it wasn't a feast or famine. It was just uh, you use what you get and. Uh, so I know you probably run across that one, and I didn't even realize then. I thought the hose was all the same, but there is a Navy standard. And I've got in that book there, I've got two of the sizes of them, the, the uh, set and the uh, couplings and the, the uh, fittings of all the thread sizes and all that. And you learn that pretty fast of how you can uh, find what you need to use. And so... We got that, and then a lot, little by little, why then? But then to find a place for a now permanent, more permanent place than before all this uh, was that we need a firehouse. And I started, and I've got plaques of everything around in this area, in a way, in miles around it, to try to find a place that we could get a place for a uh, fire department. And there's no reason why that now that. We ought to have a, a one of the most up-to-date fire uh, houses and fire equipment now, it, but it's, it takes uh, like this time, and sometimes I got kind of discouraged. But in due time, but uh, but uh, remember th things that I learned a long time ago: things don't just happen. And I know that for me to stop there quick over there to see that far, that didn't just happen. And the same way it won't just happen today. It didn't just happen that piece of property now to put second fireplace. And that's what one of the things we'd hope for. We'd hope that we'd be further along now than where we are with like the community building with one that we would have a place to with a <coughs> fire station. So it's, it's not out of reach now, but don't be discouraged if you don't. And I'm not telling you that. Uh, and I don't want never. I, I had interviews. People want me to talk to them, but I don't want and I don't want to give and I won't give any interviews to it because I don't want everybody to say that it was Jim Stevens done it or he had this or that. He took everybody's part. And then for the first, uh, like I said, in that book here, I've got is our first, uh, <coughs> the, the Pleasant Run Improvement Organization is where it started at. That's one of the priorities, one of the things that we did. But then again, we started getting some funding, and people wanted to give on the fire station, and they wanted to. And I was getting some funding from Mike uh, Stiff down there from the trustee to be used on it, and we couldn't use it for anything else, and didn't want to use it for anything else. But that, uh, to, in order to keep that, I had it in an incorporation. So we had another meeting, and uh, then I called that again to. Name them off. I said, "Would well, you want to be?" It? So we had five spaces plus the two uh, for the president and the secretary for uh, assistant on that. So that's how come they had seven names on it. But it was not necessarily those particular seven people because there was a lots of people that gave them their time and lots of effort along in, in getting together a place that, that you could fight uh, fight fires with. So them seven names in it was ones that, that was put on there in order for financial purposes so that it would be kept separate from the other. That, that's what the seven there because we had more people 
that uh, I noticed there too that on that one paper that I've got that I think it was 20 some names that we had that had keys that we had made up keys for that the first farmhouse up there that they could get in that they could work and do and it was cramped and then we was able to get a I was able to get a pickup truck and it was I think Gary and Emma and everybody had yeah and it was this it was in perfect condition and I was able to get that for us and I had hoped to begin with for that but it was put to a good use with the right your telephone truck wasn't it yeah, yeah, it was uh, originally, it was when the crane had, they had, uh, it was been all reconditioned, it was, oh, it was like new, and I thought, boy, I was having almost then to get that truck to go back with it at first. So anyway, uh, that one area, I look forward to the, the things now, I know that there's things, that there's a couple other things I want, well, I wanted to bring it to you. Firefighters, volunteers, that goes out, don't even know what like it was there in that room there, that not knowing what they're going to be facing, what it's going to be facing, their lives are in danger, and for a person to, uh, and then they also have work to be done too. They've got like a hypothetical, like have a roof leaking or something, but it's out fighting far that night and they couldn't fix the roof. And how many we need to like community there's things that they could do to help them out on the back and, and the first responders that didn't even have them back then that I know there's things that they have there's them air mats I know there's some things that I know of particular situations that there's some equipment that they could have used and the work that they are there that they never had before there has been a lots of lots of good things has happened there's a lot of a long ways from what it was to where I said to start with it, where we had nothing and some thought that we couldn't have. And so I, I'm saying all this to encourage you that uh, look up, there's a way to head. The fire station will set out there now like it is and not even be used. It ought to grow up around it if there's not support for it. And it needs everybody's support. And I know they have fish rods and things like this. But there ought to be more than this. There ought to be this effort uh, in the situation over there at uh, God's storehouse it takes people's efforts and people has got behind it and all these things it's community things that needs to be handled and, uh, and like I said a uh, person don't realize what they go but you know there's some of those things that a person could step in and help fix the roof or <coughs> have on the back or have me now and then to have something to let them know that, you know, that they're there, that they're, they are important. So I don't know if there's any questions or something that you have, but, uh, and I'm not saying this, but only just, uh, that, that, I, that I would do it again. And, and I don't consider there's anything that I really give out of the way than, than what anybody else would. So. We appreciate it, Jim. Uh, do I care? Yeah. <laughs>